from the Aria Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Marketplace. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are kicking off three crazy days at AWS reInvent. It is the place to be the week after Thanksgiving. There's got to be 50,000 people. We haven't got the official word, but it's packed and it kicks off tonight with the reception. We're here at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience over at the Aria in the quad. Come check us out. A lot of good stuff going on. A lot of fun stuff going on. And we're excited to have first time to theCUBE. He's Nathan Dyer, Senior Product Manager for Tenable. Great to see you. Jeff, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, have the energy. They open the doors, the people are streaming. Ooh. I don't know if it's the food or the drinks or the vendors. All the know. above. Yeah, I think so. Probably more the food and the yeah, drinks. Yeah, I, I think so. All right, so give us an overview of Tenable for people who aren't familiar with the company. Yeah, so Tenable, we are the cyber exposure company. Uh, we help organizations uh, assess, manage, and measure their cyber risk across their entire organization, across their modern attack surface. And so what we try to do is help answer four fundamental questions around security. You know, how exposed are we? Um, how do we prioritize based on risk? Um, how are we doing over time from a, from a measurement standpoint? And then how do we compare with our peers? And so uh, if you haven't heard of Tenable, chances are you've heard of Nessus, which is one of our flagship brands. Uh, Nessus just turned 20 years young uh, earlier this year. Um, you know, if you're a pen tester, if you're a consultant, if you're a, a practitioner, you know Nessus. Um, but over the years, we've added some other brands as well. Uh, Security Center, which is now renamed uh, Tenable.se, um, which is our on-prem vulnerability management solution. And then Tenable I.O., which was released in 2017, which is our cloud-based vulnerability management solution and built on AWS. Right, so I just, I was doing some research. I love, I love your guys' little uh, mantra here. You know, it's, it's security for code, for clouds, and containers, you know, you got all the C's there. <laughs> the containers, you know, what's going on with Docker over the last couple years, and now obviously the huge groundswell with Kubernetes, you know, this container thing, depending on who you talk to, it's been around for a long time, but it certainly didn't have the momentum. How has the kind of, the, the growth of the container world impacted the security space? Oh, it's, it's massive. I mean, containers are everywhere. Um, in fact, there's a strong affinity to cloud and containers. So a lot of our large AWS customers love containers, they've been dabbling with containers for quite some time, they're moving more and more workloads to, um, to you know, be containerized and, and on Kubernetes and, and Docker, et cetera. Um, from a security standpoint, that introduces a lot of challenges, right? You know, the short-lived life cycles of, of uh, Docker containers make it very hard for us in security to assess or discover them. Um, you know, they're part of the whole immutable infrastructure phenomenon, so you can't patch it in production, right? It's, it's infrastructure as code, you have to tear down the container, fix the image, and then redeploy. So, you know, from our perspective, we think you have to secure containers by focusing on the container image, right? And so, specifically, as developers are, um, you know, they're spinning up new code, compiling new builds, creating new container images, is they're running quality assurance checks, uh, security has to be a critical part of that, that quality assurance process, right? right? As you're doing integration tests, unit testing, API testing, Security has to be a critical test, um, looking for vulnerabilities in malware as part of that process. Right. So. But the rate of change in, in those images is pretty high. I mean, the rate of deployments is super high, but like you said, a lot of them have short lifespans, they're up and they're down. Right. So, you know, have people baked that into their process? I mean, obviously, I hope they, they are. How are you helping them to make sure that security is a really key piece to that image? Because once that image goes out, it has access to all kinds of things. So then the new news with containers, and then by focusing on the image, it forces security teams to talk to their development peers, right? In order to secure DevOps and secure containers, security has to be embedded in the continuous integration, continuous delivery cycles, or systems. And, and, if, and if you're focusing on development, um, you have a much greater chance of, of you know, making sure that vulnerable container images are not escaping into the wild, and you guys should get a hold of those, those vulnerable images and make sure they adhere to corporate policies before they're released in, into production. Right. So that's the new news. Well, it was funny, because you referenced the DevOps, because DevOps now has been around for a while, and clearly is the way the code gets deployed at a very rapid iteration. So are there you know, some significant lessons from the DevOps security angle that you're now using then on the container side? Yeah, well first thing with secure DevOps and DevSecOps in general is you have to get the developers and security teams to talk, right? You have to, you have, to have a shared understanding of what makes each other tick, what are the goals, what are the responsibilities, priorities, understand each other. And it turns out there's actually a lot of shared understanding and mutual benefit between InfoSec and application developments. 
right? When, when security is focused on you know, solving for vulnerabilities and, and looking for security issues, you know, that's improving code quality. That's removing some of the software defects from, from the development code. And you know, developers love that. They, right, love, right. they love producing high quality code. On the flip side, you know, security teams can learn a lot about agile development, DevOps principles, right? Bringing DevOps into the security discipline and help develop or help security teams, you know, start to leverage automation and continuous testing, continuous delivery, and make them much more scalable and productive in their organization. So there's a lot of mutual uh, understanding right, there. Right. So I'd imagine there's a lot of kind of uh, similarities between kind of classic waterfall and the moat versus right. now kind of the DevOps and the continuous and, and ongoing constant process. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, so we're here at the AWS Marketplace. Uh, so you guys are selling through the Marketplace. How has that been for the company? How's the experience been working with the AWS Marketplace team? Oh, it's been great. I mean, Amazon's a great partner to work with. You know, Tenable.io, which is our cloud-based vulnerability management solution, is built on Amazon. We have a great relationship with the Amazon, Amazon engineers. Um, now for the marketplace, we've been selling uh, Nessus for a, quite some time through the marketplace. So if you're a Nessus subscriber, if you're a Tenable.io or Security Center or Tenable.se subscriber, you get access to unlimited Nessus scanners and you can provision them very easily through the, the marketplace. It's right. super easy. Um, just recently we now unveiled Tenable.io through the marketplace and so far it's been a great success. Um, now customers who prefer to buy through Amazon Marketplace, AWS Marketplace, can do so with a number, with a couple clicks and be provisioned and get, get up and running with Tenable I.O. Um, it's super easy, you can learn about the product, kick the tires with a free evaluation and, and really provision the product very simply. Yeah, I would imagine the touch uh, from your guys' side goes down significantly when they're just coming right through the marketplace. Exactly, that's the idea. Make it super easy for customers to, to invest in Tenable.io and get a great experience in doing right. it. Right, what about your own sales guys though? Are there a little uh, channel conflict? They're like, hey, come on, I want to sell that thing. We don't want to go through uh, Amazon. Not at all. You know, our, our mantra is we want the customer to purchase through the channel they're comfortable with. And if they want to purchase through the AWS um, marketplace, we have a channel for them. If they want to go through our, our, our three-tier model, we have obviously a great experience there as well. So. Yeah, and clearly Amazon brings a lot of customer eyeballs exactly. uh, yeah. to the table. They're a great partner. So just before we wrap, you guys came out with a vulnerability intelligence uh, report. Um, I just wonder if you could share some of the highlights, some of the things, you guys are obviously keeping track of this. You talked about benchmarking against your peers, and I know there's also a lot of sharing of information within security companies to kind of know, you know what the bad guys are and some of the patterns and best practices. So, I right. wonder if you could share some of the current trends, what are you seeing, how's, how's the landscape changing? Well, first of all, we have a phenomenal Tenable research team. Uh, they're, they're phenomenal in terms of the data science, in terms of the, the vulnerability intelligence. We have a wealth of data at our hands from various deployments, and so there's a lot of great number crunching and, and analysis we can generate from that. Um, what we discovered in the vulnerability intelligence report is that security teams are just bombarded with vulnerabilities, literally bombarded. You know, last year in 2017, we saw I think over 15,000 CVEs and unique vulnerabilities hitting the marketplace or hitting the industry. Uh, and by uh, the end of this year, we're expected to be between 18,000 and 19,000 vulnerabilities. So it, the trend is just going up, up, up. I think what makes matters worse though, is that when you start looking at those 19,000 vulnerabilities, over 60% of those vulnerabilities are classified as either high risk or critical. 65%? Around 60%. Of Six, the, what was the numerator? Uh, of, of, <laughs> those CV, of those 18 to 19,000 vulnerabilities big number. are classified as high risk or critical risk. So that's a lot of fire drills that, that uh, security teams need to chase. And so what we're trying to achieve is helping our, our customers and helping the market at large understand what are the true risks out there. Not right. the theoretical risks, what are the actual cyber risks? Meaning, what are the vulnerabilities that could be easily exploitable, that have exploit, you know, exploit kits already developed? You know, we have our data science team you know, looking at the different you know, the, all the characteristics of vulnerabilities and which ones would be leveraged by the bad guys and, and which ones would not be. Right. And so we can, we can significantly boil that, that number down so that um, you know, organizations can focus on only 5% of the number of vulnerabilities that they otherwise would be chasing without changing the whole overall security risk organization. Right. So, um, you know, prioritization is super, super critical for those organizations. Nathan, I think we'd call that separating the signal from the noise, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jeff, well, thanks for having me. Nathan, thank you very much. It's great to see you and, uh, and have a great show. Thanks, you too. All right, I'm Jeff, he's Nathan, you're watching theCUBE. We are at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience at the Aria, at the Quad. Come on by, Stephen, uh, serving free food and drink. See you next time.